You know, this uh, early this week, um, I saw something. It, it was about a it was about a close call that somebody had, and immediately the Lord put in my mind this phrase, and He told me to take a week off from what I was preaching and preach this today because somebody needed to hear it. And so I don't know who needs to hear this today. But I want to ask a question. If Jesus came back right now, how many of you are 100% sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that you're going with Him? If I put a shock collar on everybody in here and you told a lie, if I did that today, how many of you could honestly say that if Jesus parted the clouds, He rent the clouds back, and He comes down today, how many of you are ready? Now, I don't know this for sure. But I don't know that everybody here is ready. I'm not 100% sure. Because if God gave me this message and He did it so clearly, then I'm almost 100% positive that there's somebody here who's not ready to meet their Maker today. So I'm asking you today to pay attention. Put your phones down. Whatever else you're doing, put it up and pay attention. This is a place where you need to come and hear God's Word, not anything else. If you want to play games or you want to do this or you want to do that, then step out the, step out the door and do it somewhere else. So this is a serious message. You need to hear what God has to say today, not me. I'm going to let the Scripture speak for itself. You need to hear this. Because one day God told me, He said, Son, He said, you're not ready. He said, you might think you are, but you're not. And if he would have took me out, there is no chance that I would have gotten heaven where I was at that day. I know that for a fact. And I know a lot of people in the Quaker faith, they like to throw out this, they, they like to throw, uh, out this term, birthright. You can throw that in the trash. Birthright means nothing. When you stand before Jesus Christ, He's not going to care. The only thing that He's going to care about is you are, if you are blood-bought, born-again Christian. That's all that's going to matter. He's not going to care if you're Quaker. He's not going to care if you went to a Quaker church every single day of your life. It's not going to matter. It doesn't matter if you went to a Baptist church your entire life or Pentecostal or any other denomination or non-denomination. It don't matter. None of that's going to matter. The only thing that's going to matter is if you gave your life to Him, you surrendered yourself to Him, that's all that's going to matter. So how many of you come to church on a weekly basis intending to be serious about your faith? This is a place for you to come and get prepared for the rest of the week. How many of you are ready? If Jesus Christ came right now, are you ready? Are you 100% sure? Because when you walk out here today, I want you to be. Because as Steve said, what a difference a day makes. Because the Lord Jesus Christ could come back at any time. That's what His Word teaches. Today we're going to come out of the Gospel of Matthew. Now, I'm, I'm sure that many of you have probably read this scripture before. Those of you that were in Bible study when we went through the parables, you're, you're probably familiar with this as well. But this is the scripture that he sent me to. This is the scripture that he gave me. You know, and, I, and I've heard people say, 
especially over the last few weeks on some of the topics I've been teaching on, they haven't particularly liked it because it's not been pleasant. Well, what I'm about to share with you today are the words of Jesus. And I can assure you, they were not pleasant to the people he was telling them to. Because he was telling them to make sure they had their ducks in a row, that they had their T's crossed and their I's dotted. Because when he came back, and he was coming back, that there wasn't but one shot to make sure you were ready in this life. The context of this scripture comes actually before this chapter. And it ends in this chapter. It's actually a bookmark. And I'm not going to tell you about it now. I'm going to wait till the end because I want to share with you. Because I told you it was very uncomfortable. Can you imagine Jesus? Jesus is telling his disciples this. Now imagine this. How many of you, do, how many of you think that you are as close to Jesus as his followers were when he said this. These were the people who walked with him everywhere, who listened to everything he said, who watched all his miracles. How many of you think you're this close? And he told them this. Because they were the ones who were asking. He was not pleasant about what he said. Because he was serious about what he said. And he wanted to make sure where their hearts were at. That he was their treasure, not this world. Far too many people treasure things over Jesus. And so in this, in this chapter, Jesus is continuing a message about the end time. Now, people love to talk about the end times, especially in this day and age where everything seems like it's turned upside down. Every other day or every day you hear, Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon. I hope so. I hope he is. I really do. But this is a parable that talks about this because his disciples were asking Jesus, when, what time, when are you coming back? And before this, Jesus told him, said, I don't know. He said, but get ready. And so he started sharing with them a list of parables. So let's, let's begin in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. If you would, please stand. And I love the line from Jesus' revolution. This is the Word of God. Let's open it together. We're just going to read verse 1 and then pray. We're going to go through verse 2. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your everlasting goodness. Lord, we thank you for the messages that you give us in your word that prepare us for your coming. Lord, we don't know what the next second holds. We don't know what our next breath holds. But we should know who holds our future. And it is you. Our eternity lies in your hands. So Father, today I pray that whoever this message is intended for, that this person would, or persons, would open their hearts and open their ears to receive your message today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus started speaking a, a, a treasure trove of, of, of parables. And he spoke in parables to to give some deeper understanding of the scriptures or life issues. And then some it was to throw them off because, quite frankly, they didn't want to hear it. 
And so Jesus begins by telling this message uh, very much like he did many of his other parables. And he said, then the kingdom of heaven will be like. So he started explaining that these ten virgins who took their lamps and, and went to meet the bridegroom in verse 1. Now he was talking about this, this wedding feast and, and wedding ceremonies in, in Israel and the ancient Near East. We don't really have a whole lot of details about these. You know, don't tell us a whole lot. We do have a few details. We know that there was a processional that would come before the bridegroom to the bride's home. We know that there was that processional. We know that there would be a great announcement made. We knew that they would have a great feast. And then they would go back to the groom's house to consummate the marriage. You know, the bridegroom has been a natural symbol. A natural symbol of God. That comes from the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, through the prophets, God was speaking in terms that, that, that the church is the bride and, and He's the husband. He's, he's instituted this thing like a marriage. And so we start, He starts talking about this great feast. And He's talking about a time when He would come. There's going to be an announcement. There's people invited. Now here's the thing. Hey, guess what, everybody? Good news for everybody in here. You're all invited. Every one of you are invited. But see, here's where the, here's where the, the story changes. Here's where the story gets down to the nitty gritty. He starts explaining more of this and explaining more of this parable. He says in verse 2, he said, he said, five of them were foolish and five were wise. Now, this is something that stems from the Old Testament. Especially when you start reading Proverbs. But in the Old Testament, when, you start, when he starts throwing that word around wise and foolish, a lot of times that's, that, that, that signifies people who are saved and people who are unsaved. Because you look at the actions of the wise and you look at the actions of the unwise, the foolish. So any times, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, I know a lot of you like to do your daily devotions in the book of Proverbs. Anytime you see that, that, those terms, wise and foolish, look at the context. But Jesus is using this Old Testament terminology in this parable to make them understand, and they would have understood this. In verse 3 it says, For when the foolish took their lamps... They took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. Now, you know, life is about being prepared, isn't it? How many of you, when you, you get up in the morning and you head out for your day, you go to get prepared? Some people's routine is the same. You don't change it day by day. You think if you change it, it's going to jinx everything. For most people, it's like, don't speak to me until I've had coffee. I'm fine either way, but I still want coffee. <laughs> At least a whole pot. But people get up and they get prepared for their day. And, you know, they're not just getting prepared for that singular moment. What are they getting prepared for? They're getting prepared for the day ahead. Now, they don't know what that day is going to entail. You know, that day could entail a lot of different things. It could be good, it could be bad. But you prepare for the same, right? You prepare for whatever that day is going to hold. You know, for Christians, you know, we try and get up, we meditate on the Word of God, we pray, do things like that. That is our preparation to get us through the day, to give us that spiritual sustenance that we need to get us through the day. So that way when we face things that are not pleasant, when we face things that maybe we get a message from God that we need to hear. You know, maybe He comes down, we hear a message and it hurts our toes. How many, of, how many of you ever leave church with hurt toes? You ought to leave church once in a while with hurt toes. Because if you're going somewhere and you never have hurt toes, you need to leave that place. Because they're not preaching the Word of God to you. Because the Word of God's going to hurt your feelings at times. 
Because the last time I checked, ain't nobody perfect. Not a one of us. But these five virgins, five wise, five foolish, they prepared different. It says here that these foolish, these foolish virgins, in preparation for this great announcement, for this, this feast that, that the bridegroom has offered to them and invited them to, He offered them to get prepared. And to be prepared for when He came. Now here's something about these. Now, we do know this about these, these ceremonies. We knew that they could last for days. They like to party. The good kind, I guess. But they like to party. They like to celebrate that whole institution. Because very early on, very early in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, it's established that, that marriage covenant relationship. And so in the Jewish community, marriage was vitally important. I wish it was that way in the church today. It's just not. It's not as important as it used to be. But this was a big deal. Because it didn't just symbolize your relationship with the, with the person you were marrying, but it symbolized your relationship with God as three people in a covenant relationship. And it says that they were unprepared because they didn't take any oil with them. Now I know we got some people in here that like to camp once in a while. They like to go off on trips. Now a lot of people who... who not necessarily going to call it camping. We'll call it glamping because they're not roughing it. What good is taking the generator but not taking any gas? What good is going out in the wilderness without any kind of food? You see, you go and you prepare. And so you, you don't know what's, what's ahead, but you know you prepared for it. And that, that's the moral of this lesson. It's to be prepared. And so they didn't take any oil with them. Now as you well know that gas runs out, don't it? If you burn gas, it runs out. Well, guess what? The oil did too. So there was an expectation to be prepared. You know, they didn't know how long this wedding celebration was going to last. It could be a few hours. It might be a few days. But you prepared nonetheless because they knew what it was. And so then it tells us in verse 4, it says, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. So you, you've got two reactions of how the righteous and the unrighteous react. The righteous prepare. What do the righteous do today? The righteous chase after Jesus. They chase after His Word. They dive in His Word. They study His Word. They get with other people who feel the same way. You know what the unrighteous do? They don't study God's Word. They fly in Christianity by the seat of their pants. They're okay with mediocrity. That's not chasing after Jesus. That's not acting like Jesus is the love of your life. So when I asked you earlier, how many of you are ready? How many of you chase after Jesus? How many of you, is Jesus the love of your life? If I asked you right now, and I put that truth collar on you that would shock you if you told a lie, how many of you right now could honestly say, He is the love of your life, there is nothing better than Jesus in your life? See, very few of us could answer that honestly. Because you're not preparing yourself. See, we all have to prepare ourselves because we all know. And I'm going to ask this question. How many of you believe and know that Jesus Christ is coming again? How many of you can honestly say that you know that without a shadow of a doubt? And now that you, you've acknowledged that, you know that, how many of you are prepared to meet Him? How many of you are prepared to meet Him if it happens this very day? I 
Like I said, I don't know. I hope everybody is. But I don't know. God gave me this message for a reason. I'm trying to prepare you. Now Jesus throws this little message in there in verse 5 and he says, as the, bride, as the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. Now I think that that's a perfect representation of sometimes where the church gets. Sometimes, you know, we go through our daily routines, we go to church, you know, we're doing this, we're doing that. We kind of get comfortable with things, you know. And then bam, all of a sudden, something happens. The church gets shook. be a variety of different things. But sometimes this happens. And so you've got the righteous. Now, notice he said they all. You know, the righteous and the unrighteous here, they, they all got drowsy and sleepy. But some were prepared and some were not. Because the bridegroom was delayed. You know, I love hearing people talk about Jesus going to come back. Jesus going to come back tomorrow. Well, I don't know if he is. I hope so. be great. Be great to come back right now. But we don't know. You know, people have been saying for 2,000 years that Jesus is coming back very soon. You know, if you've watched The Chosen, you know that He loves that word soon. Now, there's that word again, soon. If you don't know what that means, go watch The Chosen. Soon, imminent. It means that he's coming back. We just don't know when. So what do you do? When you don't know when somebody's coming back, what do you do in the meantime? You prepare. You get yourself ready. So that way if something happens, that way if the, if the clouds break free that one day, and you hear a trumpet blast, and you hear the Lord Jesus Christ call you home, and you were prepared for that day, not knowing when it came. And here's that, here's that message. Verse 6 says, But at midnight there was a cry. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Can you imagine? I, I, I love the scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Talking about how the Lord will call those home. I love that scripture. Love that passage. And I love, I love what comes right after that message. In the very last sentence of that paragraph in our Bibles, it says, encourage one another with these words. How many people are encouraged to know that Jesus is coming back? Some people are scared to death. You know why they're scared? Because they're worried about earthly things instead of heavenly things. See, so when, you, when, you, when you're not worried about the worldly things and you're worried about the heavenly things, it don't matter what happens. It don't even matter if you die. Because what happens if you die and you know Jesus? Steve, what happens? Yeah, Steve knows. See, that's the thing. When you're worried about heavenly things, you're not worried about earthly things. And far too many people are worried and live with the earthly things. We need to be prepared with the heavenly things. Earthly things ain't going to make a bit of difference. But the heavenly things will. In verse 7, it tells us, it goes back after the announcements made that the bridegroom is coming. The announcement's made. Here comes this great feast that they're all been invited to. All virgins, the righteous and the unrighteous, they were all invited to this great feast. And it tells us, it says, then all the virgins rose and they trimmed their lamps. Now trimming their lamps was, was part of that so that they didn't burn out. You know, every once in a while we got to do a little pruning, you know. We got to do, do a little trimming ourselves, don't we? But see, they were prepared. Now pay attention to what happens. It 
It says, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Now whose job was it to prepare them for this time? Was it somebody else's? You've heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again. There ain't a soul in here that's going to get you into heaven. Nobody. Far too many depend on somebody else thinking that they're going to help get them into heaven. It ain't going to happen. It's not, it's not my job to give you my salvation. You have to work that out on your own. I can't give you my salvation even if I wanted to. And the same for you. You couldn't give it to me. Now what these foolish virgins were asking was out of selfishness. Because they chose not to be prepared. They chose not to follow after the bridegroom. Not to be prepared for when He came. That's far too many people that sit on church pews every Sunday morning. They come in and they're selfish because they're expecting somebody else to get them there. It is nobody's responsibility but yours. How many of you are taking that personal responsibility today? You know, the Bible tells us that we'll all individually stand account before Jesus Christ one day. Not as a group, but individually. To give an account of our lives. Are you prepared to give an account? Whether you are or not, you're going to give an account anyway. But it's what he says that's going to make the big difference. Because we're all going to have to stand before him giving an account, the righteous and the unrighteous. So the wise said, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. See, they had planned ahead. They had planned ahead and they would got prepared for the time when he came. Because they knew that if their lamps went out, that if they didn't have the means to get to the party in time, that they would also be left out. That's what the wise and the unwise know. And so here's what happens. It says, And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Those who were ready. Those who were prepared. Again I ask, are you prepared today? Jesus Christ came back right now. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Or are you like these foolish virgins who went out while the bridegroom had come and missed the party? How many of you is that going to be you? I hope it's none of you. But he tells them to come in. Verse 11 says, Afterward the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. In verse 12 he says, But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Does that sound pleasant? How many of you, if you've got, you got an invitation from somebody that you've known? You take that invitation, you're delayed, and you go. And guess what? When you get there, because you're late, the door's already shut, and you're sitting there pounding on the door, let me in. And they say, I don't know you. Does that feel nice? Is that comfortable? Well, when Jesus said it, He didn't want it to be. 
He wanted it to be uncomfortable, to get the idea that there is coming a time when he is going to come back. And guess what? He's going to shut the door to some. Jesus Christ will never send anybody to hell. You know why? Because you sent yourself there. He's given us all the invitation. He's given us all the invitation to come before Him. Everybody who's sitting here today has heard this message, these words from Jesus. You've heard them. Those are His words. But there's going to be a day where some of you, I hope not, but some of you may be there pounding on the door saying, Jesus, please let me in. And He's going to tell you, I don't know you. Because you were not prepared. You were not prepared for His coming. How many of you today are prepared for His coming? That's something I don't want to ever hear. I don't, I don't want to hear Jesus say that to me. Truly, I do not know you. You know, what's crazy is, is if you read in these, in these other passages, it tells us a little bit, Jesus gives us some insight and says that these people were actually probably pretty good people. In another parable, He tells us that, hey, you know what? We did this for you. We did this. We did this. We helped with the homeless. You know, there were some who said that. You know, there were some, and, and look, hey, Judy, I love you. And thank you for what you're doing. But the point Jesus was making is that there were some who had this facade that they were doing this, they were doing this for the church, this, this, and this, but they were doing it for themselves. They weren't doing it for Jesus Christ. They weren't doing it for His glory. They were doing it for their own vain glory. They were doing it out of selfishness. And they did even other things. And they said that they did it in the name of Jesus, but Jesus knew. For He tells them, depart from Me, for I never knew you. Even though they did these things. Now, does that sound comfortable to you? This is what He was telling His disciples. Those who were closest to Him. Does that sound pleasant? It doesn't. But that message has never gotten one second old. That message is just as relevant today as it has ever been. We all need to hear that same message. I found this quote and I thought it was really good and I want you to pay attention closely. The previous parable in chapter 24 and the following parable in this chapter both speak of hell as the destiny for those who do not watch correctly by being properly prepared with salvation to accompany the Son of Man when He arrives. Therefore, the shut door points to damnation here as well especially with the ominous comment from the bridegroom, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Because here's the other thing. Think of this. If the gates of heaven appear to be locked on the outside, it is because the gates of hell are locked on the inside. That is a perfect illustration of what he's talking about here when he shuts the door, when the time is, is nigh and he comes back. That there are those who are going to be wanting to get into the kingdom of heaven. And it's going to look like it's locked from the outside, but actually you've chosen a far, far worse proposition. You're going to be in a hell that you cannot escape. Eternal separation from Jesus Christ. He has given you today a chance to take salvation, to live for Him. He's given you that today.
Don't be like the unwise. Jesus said, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. You might predict. You might look outside. You might say, ah, he's coming tomorrow. He said, I don't know. What makes you think you know? The thing is, is to be prepared whether he comes in the next few minutes or whether he comes a millennia from now. The thing is, is to be prepared and for you to help prepare others because he is coming back. And when he comes back, I'm sorry for you. I don't want you to be on that, that side of the door where it's locked. show you the bookends of what he was discussing when they asked him Jesus when is the time and what is to come this is what he said to his disciples to those who were closest in chapter 24 talking about no one knows the day nor the hour and he was giving this parable of the master the master who was away He said in verse 50, The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Does that sound pleasant? Jesus is speaking of hell. Eternal damnation. No way out. Eternity. And then he bookends it with this. In chapter 25. Verse 44. It says, They will also answer, saying, Lord, when when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, As you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So I want to make it very plain to you today. There is a great reality called heaven and hell. And we are all destined for one or the other. When he comes, which side of the door are you going to be on? And so, I leave with this statement. What a difference a day makes. I want to take just a moment. I just want you to bow your head in silence. I want you to pray. I want you to internally just meditate for a moment. I want you to think about the the scripture that, that Jesus shared with his closest disciples. And I want you to really think for yourself. I really want you to dig down deep, open your heart, open your mind, and ask yourself, does this apply to me? Am I ready? Have I been preparing? That's what I want you to ask yourself. Just these few moments. play a song for us today and it's one that you've heard before but this is a song of encouragement to you for anybody here who might think that you might be on the other side of that door when Jesus Christ comes back and you haven't been preparing your life maybe you haven't been living your life right look it's okay you don't have to get all cleaned up when Jesus comes to you because he's given that message to you. You're here right now. You've had a chance to listen to his message. You can accept his salvation just as freely today 
in the state that you're in, He wants you to come just as you are. Because He's going to clean you up. He's going to make your life right. Somebody will say, well, how do you know that? It's because I've been there. My life was not right. I grew up in church. I heard thousands of sermons. My life was a mess. I did not have my life together. But I came to a moment and I realized that, you know, I didn't have my life right. I was not prepared. And I knew what I needed in my life, and it was Jesus Christ. He was the only thing that was going to fix anything in me that was broken that I've been running from. And I knew that. And so today I'm telling you that if you feel that way, if you feel like it's just everything's just not right, maybe you are saved today. Maybe you know that. But maybe you just you've been down. Maybe things ain't been quite right with you, and you just want you want to get a little bit closer to Jesus today. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you just want to just say, Jesus, just help me out today. Maybe that's you. Help me get my life back on track. Help me help me come closer to you. Let me tell you something. As we sit here living and breathing today, guess what? You've got a second chance. And that's what the gospel does. I just want to open the altar up this morning. And if anybody's feeling this way, I want you to come up and just come down to the altar. Like I said, maybe, it's, maybe you're saved. Maybe you just need to work on some things in your life. But the altar's open. And I want you to leave here today knowing the things are right with Jesus in case He comes back today. Mercy's new at every dawn The weight of sin forever gone True life is given through a holy plan It's the gospel of the second chance Shackled once in guilty chains Imprisoned by regret and blame Now freedom sought Yeah.
I've asked uh, Brother Chance, um, I've asked him to tone it down a little bit because uh, he can really light it up. But I want to, I just want to give you another moment. If everyone please stand and, and bow your heads, I just want to give you another moment. give you another moment here today that if, if the Lord has, has touched you in some way today or you know, maybe you have a few doubts maybe you're just not sure I just want to assure you it's okay because that's why Jesus is here you know we all have doubts in our life we, we all ask the question of Lord am I ready? Am I ready to meet you? And you know what He's there to tell us? He says just let me in and I'll prepare you he says, he says, come to me who are weary and heavy laden. How many of us have problems here today? We all do. So he's telling us here today that if you're burdened in this life, that if you've got problems, that if there's things you're trying to work through and you just don't know which way to turn, I'm telling you today that Jesus is the answer. He can reach down right now and just touch you, touch your soul, touch your life. And everything will change. Jesus is the giver of life. And He wants to give you abundant life. He doesn't want you to walk through this life with shackles and chains, knowing that you're burdened and that you're bound to this world. He wants to break those chains. He wants to set you free so that you can walk in eternity with Him. That is what He's asking today. So I'm asking each of you today that if, the, that if the Lord is talking to you today, I don't want you to be scared. Let the Lord speak to you. Open the door and let Him in. And I'm just asking today that, that if there is somebody here, maybe you couldn't come down. That's okay. I'm not going to call you out in front of nobody. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I just, if you're needing a little little extra prayer today, I'm just, ask, just just put your hand up today. Just put your hand up today. If you, if you need just a little bit of extra Jesus today, just lift your hand. It's okay. Every head every head bowed, every eye closed. But let Jesus speak to you today. He speaks so tenderly. Father, today I just ask that everyone who, everyone here that has heard this message, Father, today I pray, Lord, that they would heed this message that You are coming back and that we have to be prepared for when it is that day that You come. No matter if it's in the next few moments or whether it's in we're dead and gone and He comes back. Whatever it is. Father, I just ask that we would all be prepared. And Father, today, I just I want to lift up every brother and sister in here today. Father, that they would receive Your Word, that they would receive it gladly. But Father, that, that these words would not be hollow. Father, that they would listen to You. That they, that nudging that they feel, that, that trembling inside that they feel is, is You telling them. Just let me in. Open the door and let me into your heart. He's telling you today that He doesn't want your perfection. He just wants your heart. He just wants your love and admiration. He can take care of the rest. Any changes that you think that you can't make, it's okay. Because guess what? He can change them. There is no situation that is too dire there, there, there is no situation where you're too far gone. Jesus has taken the worst of society and they're now in heaven with Him because they chose to accept Him as Lord and Savior and let Him be the light that may change. We can't do this on our own. We can't walk through this life on our own but we can walk through it with Him. In our weakness, He is our strength.
Father, today, I, I just pray that you would be with each person. I pray that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, that if they have an issue, I just pray, Lord, that you would touch them so much today. Lord, let them feel your presence and just know that you're here for them. So that way, when that time comes, that they're prepared to meet you. And I pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 